Who's ready to rock today, Fire Nation? JLD here, and welcome to episode 1873 of EO Fire, where I chat with entrepreneurs on fire a seven days a week. And I've created four incredible courses for you, Fire Nation, so that you can master productivity, accomplish your goals, create funnels, and webinars that convert. They're free, and they're waiting for you at eofire.com. Now let's chat with today's featured guest, Samuel Gonzalez. Samuel, are you prepared to ignite? Let's do it. Yes. Samuel is the owner and founder of Urbane Box. He is also a full-time police officer, having worked for the NYPD for two and a half years, and then he transferred to the Schenectady Police Department. So we got ourselves a little bit of a cypreneur here, Fire Nation. Samuel, Take a minute, fill in some gaps from the intro, and give us a little glimpse of your personal life. I'm a full-time police officer currently, as uh, as well as a business owner of Urbane Box. Uh, I've been a police officer now for 12 years, um, and I've been uh, the owner of Urbane Box now going on four years. Um, You know, I started NYPD straight out of college, um, did a couple years, and decided to go back home, so I moved upstate, um, transferred to uh, Schenectady Police Department. And then uh, while I was a police officer, I, I read a book that kind of gave me this idea of starting a business. I got that entrepreneur spirit that started to burn inside of me. And once it starts burning, Samuel, let me tell you, it never goes out, brother. So welcome to the team. What would you say right now is your area of expertise in the area of entrepreneurship? I think creating an online business. Um, it took a while to grow this business, and I kind of you know, I had to kind of learn. Um, I learned a lot, what what worked, what didn't work. Um, you know, I quickly realized with an online business, uh, it takes time to grow. It, something, it doesn't happen overnight. You don't see success overnight. Um, unfortunately, you know, when I first started the online business, I, you know, I thought that the uh, business would just take off and um, it's going to online get tons of traffic. And I quickly realized after four months, I didn't get a single customer. I'm like, this is not, Um, This is not looking good for me. Um, This is not looking good for my family. I just invested all this money into this business, and I I quickly realized that I had to uh, start researching ways to get traffic to my website. Um, So I spent countless of hours of working on my website and uh, researching strategies on Facebook, um, Instagram, and other social media outlets to kind of build traffic to my website and also uh, work on my search engine optimization with blogging um, to kind of focus on organic traffic so uh, we would rank higher on Google. So what's something about organic traffic or SEO or the social media strategies that you used? Just pick one thing out of all of those things that you think that we probably don't know as entrepreneurs, but we probably should. I spent countless hours kind of looking at my impressions on Facebook and I noticed that with Facebook, if you if you make a post uh, on your on your newsfeed and you and you promote that post for for example five dollars a day, you'll get more impressions for for your for your money. So what I first did was kind of get my likes up. I, I invested like five ten dollars a day on Facebook likes to to my page to kind of build my audience. And, and once I started reaching about two thousand likes, I I noticed that the cost per click w- was quite expensive, and and you know I had a family to feed. I I couldn't afford to put all that money into a Facebook ads and, you know, the cost per click can be like 70 cents to a dollar. Um, sometimes they'll drop to 25 cents. But I noticed if I just promoted, if I promoted a post, I did something catchy, an image or a catchy saying with an image. And I would promote that for five bucks a day. Uh, I noticed I was getting more impressions and it was more like two cents, uh, an impression. So my followers would like it and then their friends would see it. And I just quickly realized that I was getting uh, more followers and it was kind of a, a little hack for some, someone that who's just starting a business from the spare bedroom of his house um, with little, you know, funding. Um, I was able to kind of grow my social media and, and also build my uh, website traffic as well. One like at a time, one share at a time, fire nation, make it happen. Now, Samuel, I want you to take us to what you consider your worst entrepreneurial moment to date. Take us right there. Take us to that moment. Tell us that story. Touch base on it a little bit, but uh, I I think the worst uh, moment of being an entrepreneur was uh, after four months. I you know I spent countless hours doing my own website. Um, You know, I went to college for a couple years for computer programming, Um, so I taught myself HTML. And I spent a lot of 
hours. I would leave work, um, put my son down to bed, and I would stay up till 2 in the morning, get back up, get to work by 8 a.m., and then on, on my days off, sometimes I would just stay up for 24 hours. Um, and what hit me hard was that after four months of me um, busting my re- rear, just trying to get this business going, working on my online, um, like finally launched my website, it took four months for my first customer. And it was very disheartening. I almost uh, quit. I almost like I invested uh, about five to eight thousand um, dollars to get this. You know, I pretty much depleted my savings. Um, I'm like, I'm, you know, this is not looking good. I, so I, I had to dig deep at that moment. Um, I had to stick with it. And like I said, I, I did a couple different strategies. I worked on my SEO, but I would say that was the, the most difficult, worst part of being a an entrepreneur is when you don't see success so quickly. Um, so I kind of had to be uh, patient. Um, but that was the, probably the worst moment: investing all that money and not getting and waiting four months. And I finally landed my first customer. Now everybody goes through this, Samuel. I went through it: the struggles, the doubts, the near quitting. Pretty much every entrepreneur that I've talked about has really gone to their breaking point. And you know, most of the time people do quit and entrepreneurs do quit. We just never hear their story because they quit. You know, it's the ones that make it that we hear about the time they almost quit. So how did you get through it? Like what was the thing that kept driving you forward? Spending, you know, your really hard money, you know, hard earned money that you're that you're making as a police officer. How are you continuing to justify that even though you went four months? What was the secret? What was the tip? Being working full time did help a little bit financially, um, but at that moment, um, I I've always been very motivated. Um, I came from a very poor family. Um, father went to jail. My house got raided by police. So I always had this burning sensation inside of me to always succeed. Um, you know, that started from a very young age, from things I've had to see and overcome. Um, the pov- you know, my parents being poor. Um, going to college on, on a track scholarship because I just ran. I just tra- I, when I used to train, I used to train until you know, you know, I would race through the pain and I, I would just push myself. Um, and at that moment when I hit four months without a customer, I remember a couple people, even uh, my ex-wife, uh, my wife at the time, my ex-wife wasn't very uh, supportive of me at that time and. I remember one of my coworkers at work when I told him the idea was like, "Oh, you're never going to make it." Um, my buddy started a clothing business online, and he and he stopped. And I kind of took all those things, and I didn't let it weigh me down. Instead, I used it as fuel and fire. Um, so I took that as motivation, and I and I just kept digging. I, I rather than quit. I just changed different things. So, for example, I was using Google AdWords, and I realized it was too expensive. So I just looked at what else I could do that's more affordable. So I started reaching out to bloggers, uh, reaching out to YouTube uh, reviewers. So I would try to bargain with them. I'll give you a free close just for an honest review. Um, So it's kind of those little things that you have to, if something's not working, you have to see, make a change. Um, Don't quit. Maybe just a little something you can do differently to help you gain that success in the future. Fire Nation, your friends that are telling you that you won't make it, they're losers. They are absolute losers. And guess what? They don't want you to make it because if you make it, then they look in the mirror and say, wow, I am a loser because I'm not even taking a risk. And here's my buddy and he went ahead and took a risk and now he's made it. And I'm just even that much bigger of a loser because they are already losers. And you are Fire Nation, the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So guess what? It's your own fault if you keep listening to these loser friends and you keep letting them hold you down and hold you back and your mother and your sister and your friend and your this and your that. It's your own fault if you keep hanging around them. Don't blame them. Blame yourself. 100% responsibility. But you're the one that's listening to them. You're the one that's keeping them in your top five. But guess what? That's not you, Fire Nation, because you're listening to myself. You're listening to Samuel. And right now, today, in this moment, we're part of your top five. And guess what? Samuel's on his way to greatness. You know, I've had a lot of success over the years. So you're experiencing a conversation with successful entrepreneurs and we're your five today. We're part of your five. So keep growing on that. Keep going from this strength to the next strength and so on and so forth. Now, Samuel, you've had some good ideas over the years with organic traffic, with social media, with paid traffic. I mean, you've you've done some cool things, SEO. What would you say is the greatest idea that you've had to date, that you've successfully implemented as an entrepreneur? Take us to one of those great aha moments. Tell us that story. 
the change of membership of my business. Um, we were kind of doing a 10 day trial, um, and you pay for only what you keep, you know, or like a styling service. And I quickly realized that, um, it, it was, we were struggling because I would have to upfront the cost of a lot of the inventory and we we're sending out clothes where we don't know if someone's going to return everything or buy anything. Um, so I quickly got this idea to kind of turn my business into a full blown subscription service instead. Um, because at this point now, uh, members would have to pay up front for the clothes. So it helped uh, prevent um, you know, fraud, theft of clothes. And also, um, we would have the capital up front um, rather than taking a chance. Because um, the last we, when we were sending out the clothes, sending out, and they got 10 days to try it on, um, a lot of times they'll return everything or they'll just keep one item. And I, I realized that that the the business was not going to make it so i decided to do the 60 dollar membership and and since then it's been it because the 60 dollar membership was is a very affordable price point and that in over three years i was able to make these connections with these warehouses and in these brands to be able to get um these clothing at um at a price point where it would be profitable for for us but as well give our customers a great a great deal so they're saving um, quite a bit off the retail prices and and since then it's it's our business is blowing up and we're very excited for it fire nation you have to keep testing you have to pivot you have to adjust i mean i'm doing it every single day with different things within my offer opportunities and offers and funnels that i have here with entrepreneur on fire i mean i'm always testing i'm always getting feedback i'm always trying something new and you should be too and you know samuel he could have just been stubborn, put his nose to the grindstone and fail. But no, he was willing to look at the feedback, realize it wasn't working, adjust, pivot, make things happen. So Samuel, that's my biggest takeaway from your story. What do you want to make sure our listeners get from that aha moment? I would love for you know most entrepreneurs to realize that if you have this idea, you know, I don't think you should sit on it. I think you should go for it. Um, cause I, you know, I went for it. I always thought to myself, I rather at least if I fail, I know I, I, I tried and I got the answer rather than living life. What if I would, if I ever capitalized on this, but I also want to make sure that people know that success doesn't come overnight, but you have to be patient, but you also have to have pers- perseverance. Um, nothing's easy. Nothing's given to you in life. Um, and you're going to have to adapt and make changes and, and know that um, that sometimes things don't go your way, but doesn't mean you should quit. It, it's it's a hard work, but once it gets going, once you start getting momentum, you'll realize it will pay off. And seeing your business grow, it's the greatest thing. It's the greatest feeling for me to look back and say, hey, wow, I started this in a spare bedroom in my house. Now it's being pumped out on the, in, a, in a warehouse, uh, in a fulfillment center. I've grown it to that point, and it, it continues to scale. So just go for it, but just know that it will in, involve work and just be patient and show a lot of perseverance and just be willing to uh, adapt and make changes if needed. Samuel, today, right now, what are you most excited about in the entrepreneurial sense? I'm very excited um, with the way how online businesses are going right now, and I I love the fact there's more entrepreneurs coming out. Um, I I feel like we're you know unless you're an entrepreneur you you don't know the feeling it it is to kind of start something and get it growing and get and get it to succeed and grow. Um, so I'm very fire, fired up with um, the where online businesses are going. Um, I'm fired up to seeing new entrepreneurs coming out with great ideas. Um, it, it, it's just, I feel like it's a, a great time to, if you're wanting to get into a business or regardless of what business you're into, but obviously my heart and soul is into online businesses. And that's where I became very familiar with. Uh, but if you, I'm very fired up with the success of uh, online businesses at the moment. Fire Nation, if you think Samuel's been dropping value bombs, you're right. And guess what? More are coming in the lightning round. So stick around and we'll be back from thanking our sponsors. If you're not much of a designer but are looking for ideas for your next logo, website design, or even your new business cards, then Design Crowd can help. Design Crowd gives you access to over 550,000 creative minds from around the world who will help you come up with your next design. Plus, Design Crowd makes it super simple. All you have to do is submit your brief, and then designers will begin submitting quality designs for you to review, provide some constructive feedback, and you can quickly generate multiple designs you love that fit your needs. Why pay expensive fees and wait weeks for 
for an agency to pitch an idea when you can have exactly what you need within just three days. Design Crowd is so confident that if you don't like any of the submitted designs, they'll give you your money back. Visit designcrowd.com slash fire for a $100 VIP offer for Fire Nation. That's D-E-S-I-G-N-C-R-O-W-D dot com slash fire. Designcrowd.com slash fire. I know my business is only as successful as the people I hire, which is why I choose to show my appreciation for my employees throughout the year. And when it comes to the holidays, the gift giving season continues. So if you're looking for the perfect business gift, choose gifts that are simple to give and a joy to get. Choose Omaha Steaks. They even have special holiday pricing on the perfect business gift for Fire Nation. It's an ideal holiday gift for your clients, employees, or partners. The perfect business gift includes four bacon-wrapped tri-tip steaks, four Omaha steak burgers, four gourmet franks, two boneless pork chops, four kielbasa sausages, four free caramel apple tartlets, plus you'll get free shipping. And right now, this exclusive holiday gift package is only $59.99. Visit omahasteaks.com, type EOF in the search bar, and choose the perfect business gift. Again, visit omahasteaks.com and enter code EOF. In the search bar to send or experience this exclusive gift package for only $59.99 and it ships free. Samuel, are you ready to rock the lightning rounds? Let's do it. What was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? Right out of college, when I was in, uh, when I was going to school, uh, the first thing I thought about was becoming a law enforcement officer. I always wanted to help people in need. Um, like I mentioned earlier, you know, I, my childhood wasn't great. I, I, you know, it was a lot of domestics and, and drugs, alcohol used by my father. So I, I saw many things that, you know, I do not wish upon any, any kids or children. But I, what I did experience is that when law enforcement did respond to our house, that it was a sense of sec- the security blanket they provided. And I always wanted to do that. So I got into the law enforcement career. Um, so I was in law enforcement for about, you know, 12 years. And I didn't really be, think about becoming an entrepreneur until one of my coworkers uh, was reading a book uh, called the, the Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. And, and he's like, oh, this is a great book about uh, a person who, you know, starts his great online business and, and you should read it. So I read it and, and I became fascinated about the idea of starting an online business. And, uh, and that's when like the entrepreneur spirit started burning inside of me. And then I started brainstorming of uh, what I could create. Um, and what type of business, online business I could create. So at that time, that's when I decided to kind of go for it. And and I, like I said, I I mentioned the idea to a couple coworkers, like, oh, you're crazy. That's never going to work. But like I said, I, I just I ignored those people and I just went with it. I, I had a great idea. I'm like, I think this is going to work, and I went for it. What's the best advice you've ever received? When I first started working on my website, one of my uh, friends was uh, really good friends with. Uh, a gentleman named Michael Brown. He's the owner of Death Wish Coffee. It's a local uh, business um, around here in the capital region of New York, and he saw huge success, and it's it's going really great for him. He was able to uh, get a free commercial in the Super Bowl because um, he won a competition um, with QuickBooks, I believe. And uh, he, I reached out to him, and, and he told me – that's why I keep preaching the patient perseverance. And he told me his story of how he started Death Wish Coffee. He actually started a coffee shop, and, and he had this idea, um, and he just started an e-commerce website. And his and when I told him my concern, I'm not getting any traffic. He just told me, be patient. It will come. You have to do all this back-end work, but it will come. And he's like, you will be successful. You just got to believe in yourself. But I think the best advice I have to give people is just believe in yourself. Believe what you want to achieve and just go for it um, and don't give up. Just be patient. What's a personal habit, Samuel, that contributes to your success? I'm very OCD and, and meticulous about everything I do. Um, when I do something, I want to give 110%. I'm the type of person when I start something, I can't stop until it gets done. Um, so when I started my, for example, when I started this business, I worked on my website. I would spend, I would stay up for 24 hours if I, if I was having issues and I couldn't get it to work. Um, and I was very focused on <laughs> fixing my problems. So I would. I would say my OCD, you know, I, I'm very OCD and meticulous about everything I do. I just want to make sure everything's done. Um, as soon as I start it, I want it to be completed. 
Can you recommend one internet resource for Fire Nation? Well, the internet I'm going to recommend is actually something I use um, to actually create my own website. Um, I think it's important because, as you know, websites cost a lot of money um, to, to build. I am proud to say I built my website using uh, WordPress, which is a great open uh, source platform. So I would recommend if anyone who's looking to create a, a website for their business, check out um, www.wpbeginner.com. It's WP, uh, the abbreviations for WordPress. www.wpbeginner.com. You'll find a lot of things to help you understand how to do things on WordPress and kind of help you launch a site. If you could recommend one book, Samuel, beyond Four Hour Work Week, what would it be and why? Blue Blood gives a good insight of what we deal with and, and, and the hard work that being a police officer and um, has. But it's definitely not into the business. It, it has nothing to do with business, but it definitely has a good story. And also you, know, you can read it and also gives you an idea of what officers go through and the hard work that they do. That they do. Samuel, let's end today on fire, brother, with a parting piece of guidance. The best way that we can connect with you and then we'll say goodbye. You guys can connect with me on Instagram. Um, I'm very active, even though it's our Instagram tag is at Urbane Box. Instagram at Urbane Box. Um, Facebook is also Urbane Box and also our Twitter. Um, those are our, our tag. I'm always, always overlooking it. Um, I always keep up. So if you send us a message, don't be surprised if I'm messaging you back on there. I'm very hands-on with my social media. And what's that parting piece of guidance? Patience and perseverance. Um, I, I, if you're going to start something in a business, just make be patient uh, and and just just put your nose to the ground and keep digging. Uh, success will come. It just will. You know, it, some people's success comes faster than others, but just don't give up and just be willing to adapt if you need to. Fire Nation, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with, and you have been hanging out with SG and JLD today, so keep up the heat and head over to eofire.com. Type Samuel in the search bar. His show notes page will pop up with everything that we've been talking about today. These are the best show notes in the biz. Timestamps, links galore. Samuel, thank you for sharing your journey with Fire Nation today. For that, we salute you, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Thank you, John. Thanks for having me. Hey, Fire Nation. Hope you enjoyed our chat with Samuel today. And if you're ready to accomplish that one big goal, well, with the Freedom Journal, you can. And you can accomplish it in 100 days. By the way, use promo code podcast for a nice little discount because you listen to my podcast. I'll catch you there, Fire Nation, or I'll catch you on the flip side. If you're looking for the perfect business gift, choose gifts that are simple to give and a joy to get. Choose Omaha Steaks. Right now, their exclusive holiday gift package is only $59.99. Visit omahasteaks.com. Type EOF in the search bar and choose the perfect business gift. Again, this exclusive gift package is only $59.99 and it ships free. Just because you own an online business doesn't mean in-person meetings are a thing of the past. Da Vinci Meeting Room started just $10 an hour. And when you book your space now at davincimeeting.com slash fire, the first hour is on them. That's davincimeeting.com slash fire. Terms and conditions apply. For details, see davincimeeting.com slash fire. Where are you holding your next meeting?